Hi everyone, welcome to our virtual Bama Bug Fest. My name is Dr. John Friel, and I'm director of the Alabama Museum of Natural History. In my presentation today, I'll be talking about bugs in your home. Since our event is virtual this year, and most of you will be watching my presentation from the comfort of your own home, it seemed like this is a great place to begin our discussion about bugs by looking at the diversity of bugs that are living in all our homes. So today, I'll start by telling you a little bit about what science tells us about the kind of bugs we're likely to find in our home. Second, I'll give you some real-world examples of actual bugs I found in my own home and those of a coworker. And then finally, I'll show you a way that if you encounter an unknown bug in your own home, you can simply take a picture of it and using some free software and a free platform, you can figure out what it is and in the process, help document the biodiversity of bugs that are all around us. Perhaps the best study of bugs in homes in the southeastern U.S. is this 2016 study by Matt Bertone and co-authors entitled Arthropods of the Great Indoors, Characterizing Diversity Inside Urban and Suburban Homes. In this study, the researchers surveyed the arthropods, that is bugs, that were living or found in 50 homes in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. And the results were kind of surprising. It turned out the diversity was much higher than expected, and there was a pretty common pattern. In the study, they found that there were 32 to 211 species of bugs living in the homes that they surveyed, and the vast majority of the species found were not what we would consider to be pests. They were neither economically or medically significant to the occupants of the homes. And then they also found a really common pattern um, across the homes in which the bulk of the diversity in the species was in four major groups of bugs, those being flies, spiders, beetles, and then ants and wasps. Okay, now that we know a little bit about what to expect regarding bug diversity in homes in the southeastern U.S., let's look at some real-world examples from my own home and that of one of my coworkers. Let's start with some real-world examples of bugs you might find in your own home, starting with the most common bugs found in the study I just told you about. Those were the true flies. Perhaps it's not surprising that one of the most common types of flies found in homes are house flies, like the one shown here and its relatives. But in fact, flies are much more diverse, and I'll just show you a few additional examples of flies I found in my own house. Here we have a crane fly. Many people mistake these for big mosquitoes, when in fact they're a harmless species of fly. And this time of year, they're incredibly common in Alabama, and while you're most likely to encounter them outside, occasionally they do get indoors. The final example of a fly you might find in your home is this, a drain fly. The larvae of these flies live in the drains in your kitchens and bathrooms, and the adults emerge as these fuzzy little flies, which many people mistake for little tiny moths as they're only about a quarter of an inch long. The next group that we'll look at are spiders. This is one of my favorite groups, and again, these tend to be very common in homes. The first spider I'm going to show you is the very appropriately named common house spider. This is a harmless spider species, which is very common in homes, particularly in my home here in Tuscaloosa. And in the photo here, we see an adult female, and right above her are a bunch of spiderlings that have hatched out of the egg case she has laid. Our next spider is the southern black widow, and many of you probably recognize this one um, because it's one of the few medically significant spiders we have here in Alabama. And while the bite of these is venomous, bites are incredibly uncommon. And here we have some video of a live black widow spider that was filmed by my colleagues John and Kendra Abbott in their own home. Next is this harmless spider, a cellar spider. And these are incredibly common, uh, at least in my home, in my garage and workshop area. The final spider I'll show you uh, from my home is this twin flag jumping spider. And while I get many species of jumping spiders in and around my home, this by far is the most common species I encounter indoors. The next most common group of bugs you're likely to find in your home, other than flies or spiders, are beetles. And this is an incredibly diverse group, although I'm just going to show you uh, one example here today. Here we have video of a live weevil that my colleague Kendra Abbott discovered living among grains of rice in a container in her home. After flies, spiders, and beetles, the next most common group of bugs found in homes, or hymenoptera, that is bees, ants, and wasps. 
Here we see some video of a live red paper wasp that my colleague John Abbott discovered uh, trapped in his home. In my own home, the most common type of Hymenoptera that I find are these eastern black carpenter ants. In addition to the four major groups of bugs that you might find in your home, there are a lot of other types of bugs you can find, and I'm just going to show you a few more examples from my own home. Here we see an example of a meal moth I once found in my house. And this particular moth species, much like the weevil we saw earlier in Kendra Abbott's rice, can be a pest in homes, and the larvae or caterpillars of these moths can live and feed on dried stored goods. Here's another bug I find in my home occasionally. This is a type of isopod known as either a roly-poly or a pill bug. And these are in fact actually crustaceans that live on land. And while they normally live outside, they occasionally get into our homes. The final bug I'm gonna show you that I found in my home is this Southern Devil Scorpion. And yes, this scorpion species is venomous, but its sting is no worse than a bee sting. And while these typically live outdoors, when it's really dry outside, particularly during periods of drought, they will enter homes seeking moisture. A cool fact about scorpions is that they have maternal care. And here's a photo of an individual female I found with her babies on her back. Okay, we've talked a little bit about patterns of bug diversity you might find in your home, and I've shown you some real world examples. But what if you find a bug in your house and wanna figure out what it is? Well, I'm gonna show you now a way in which you can do that and in the process, help us document the biodiversity of bugs here in Alabama. If you're interested in identifying bugs in your own home, a great way to do it is with iNaturalist. The first step is to go to iNaturalist.org and register for a free account. Then download their free app for either your Apple or Android device. Then you're good to go. The next time you see a bug in your home, you can take a photo of it, upload it to iNaturalist, and the iNaturalist platform and community of users associated with it will help identify your bug. In addition, I've created the Bama Bug Fest iNaturalist project. This particular project is set up to automatically collect all iNaturalist observations of Alabama bugs, that is arthropods that users have submitted from the state of Alabama. So if you start using iNaturalist, the bugs you submit from your home your yard, or anywhere you are within the state will automatically be added to this project. And in the process, you'll help us document the biodiversity of the state. Hopefully you found my brief presentation about bugs in your home useful. And I look forward to seeing some of the bugs that viewers submit to iNaturalists. So until next time, take care and keep on bugging. To support this program, please consider donating to the Alabama Museum of Natural History Program's gift fund by visiting BamaBugFest.org and clicking Support at the top of the page.